Bhakti Devi Gauravani Precharine Nirvisesha Shanyavari Paschachate Satarine Panchakaupata Rubyasya Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patita Nam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Welcome everyone to our ongoing study of Bhakti Shastri. We're studying Bhagavad Gita and we want to look again briefly at chapter 14 and then we'll go on to chapter 15. Right, uh, let me see. Did you receive the documents yesterday which I had forwarded to Krishna Keshava? Did you receive an article, an essay about coming to the mode of goodness? You didn't get it. Did anybody receive? No, Maharaj, we have not received yet. Oh, did you get the mind map of chapter thirteen? Uh, no, no. Really? Oh. No. So I'll have to find out what happened when Krishna Keshava comes. I forward, I forwarded some documents to him. And I asked him to send to the students. Okay. So, anyway, I'll speak to him. Let me see now, we have a, I have a PowerPoint for this, so I, I'm going to share the screen. Yes, yes Maharaj, let me make you the host also, so. Oh, make me the host, yeah. Yes, Maharaj. Okay. Yes, Maharaj, you can go ahead. Okay. Has it, is it displaying itself? Can you see everything? Yes, Maharaj, we can see that. Yes. Okay, good. Okay, chapter 13 we completed. Chapter 14, the three divisions here. There's a quote from Srila Prabhupada. Entanglement in the modes. It has also been explained that it is due to association with the modes of nature, living entities entangled in this material world. Now in this chapter, chapter 14, the Supreme Personality explains what those modes of nature are how they act, how they bind, and how they give liberation. So then, going on to the connection between chapter 13 and 14, it's related to the verse in the 13th chapter, number 22, which is a well-known verse, which I think one of your memorization verses even, right? Purusha prakriti stohi bhunte prakriti janguna. Right? The living entity in material nature enjoys the modes of nature and in this way he meets with 
good and evil. So because we're, we're the Purusha, we're thinking we're the Purusha anyway, and we're trying to enjoy material nature, the Prakriti. So we meet with different results. Okay, good. That's the second part of the verse. And then going on, we see here, and the next verse describes Sadvam Rajas Tamaiti Guna Prakriti Sambhava Dipatnanti Mahabaho Dehe Dehinam Avyayam. Bhagavad Gita 14.5. Nibadnanti, conditioned, the living entities conditioned by, by these modes of nature, by the sattvam rajas and tama. They are conditioning all of us in this material world. So this is the way of the material nature. And here is uh, the main points from the, the center part of the 14th chapter about how the mode of goodness conditions, then the characteristics and symptoms, the destination of death, and reactions. Reactions of our results of actions. Right? Who remembers? What's the result of action in the mode of passion? Ananda Lila Maharaji? Action in the mode of passion, what's the result? You don't need to look at the book. You should no, know. No, actually, I was on, op opened the chat box. Sorry. Um, action uh, in the mode of passion will result in misery. Right. Oh. Yes, right. And what about action in the mode of goodness? Sri Garba. Uh, action in the mode of goodness, what will be the result? Uh, knowledge. Uh, uh, no. Okay, yes, like that. Satisfaction. Right. These diff what the nature, these different symptoms, the characteristics are all described there. If you have your uh, student handbook, it's on page 71. There's a very good chart there, page 71 of the text, the student textbook, and you'll see the workings of the three modes. And everything is described in detail. You get very good information. So we're not going to spend time on that. But what I would like to do, I would like to ask all of you, uh, you might like to do it in groups. I don't know. Do we have somebody here to put you all in group? Oh, Maharaj, I can try. I can. I'm, I'm here, Maharaj. I, I came back here. Oh, you're here, Prabhu. Oh, wonderful. I, I think, Raj, with your brother, you, you made Maharaj accidentally host and took away your co-hosting rights. <laughs> when, when, you make, when you make somebody host instead of co-host, you take away your rights to do, do anything. <laughs> okay. Maybe, actually, Raj, with you, maybe you could log off and log back in. And that okay. Will, log in as my core institute, and then you can get your co-hosting back, and then I can slip out again to take my treatment. Sorry, Marge, I need to take some um, treatment this morning. So. Okay, no, no problem, yeah, Prabhu. So I'll, I'll, do, I'll do the groups for you and then I'll sneak out. Okay, yeah, yeah, if you, if you could, yeah. Uh, of course. How, how many people do we have? At the moment there are 28. 28? Uh, mm? Yes. 28, 29 now. Oh. Oh. So like groups of five people in a group, there'll be six groups? Yes, we can do that. On the, and, and the topic of discussion, uh, we want to know, in what ways are you influenced by the modes of passion and ignorance? And we want to know, how can you cultivate the mode of goodness? What, what are some practical steps you can take? which will allow you to cultivate the mode of goodness. 
and this is a great exercise too. I just wanted to underline this because it 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 forms your open book assignment. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> a good call. All right, shall I put them into groups now? Please. Sure. Okay, please join your groups now. Shari Nanda Prabhu, could you join room one? And Damodar Dina Bhavana Prabhu, if you could go to room three, that would be good. Thank you, that's one. Chandra Kamataji, you can join room three, please. Those kind of musics, they, they have a mode of passion and ignorance. They can make us passionate. Okay. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna Maharaj. So, are you clear what you're doing? Yes, sir. Yes, Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. All right. When you talk about cultivating the mode of goodness, when it comes to cultivating the mode of goodness, you can't just simply say, oh, I'm going to do a morning program, or I'm going to chant 16 rounds, or 
you have to come up with some real practical efforts, practical measures, like maybe I'm, I'm not going to touch my handphone until I finish 16 rounds, I'll switch my handphone off, something like this. So be careful. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Did not get the true one. Can you add me the, send me the link? Passion Mataji, what about the passionate thing like you? Passion Mataji, I'm continuously thinking but I'm not able to get, mm. can you throw some mm. light? Yeah, so passion is also for something to be mad, we are mad about. Yes, we are right. mad about, yes. Uh, so in, like in the material world, not like in a spiritual right. or transcendental. Right. Like is opposite of mode of goodness so it is mm. covers up you know like for example if i give my example today you know i have to be in mode of goodness to come into the class but you know i was saying oh I'm, i should take some rest you know i'm feeling tired that's so that was mode of ignorance mm. the mode of no. ignorance mode of ignorance was covering the mode of goodness Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Yeah. Right, so, so the more of, uh, so that's how we get influenced by more of ignorance. And then, of the Lord will definitely uh, keep us in mode of uh, goodness. Mm. Anger uh, falls in which category actually in the passion, right? Passion, right, passion. Yeah, passion. but more of passion at the same time when we, and we start fighting, it comes to the other, like the ex, um, extreme, then it's come to the mode of ignorance. Mm -hmm. okay. Sometimes when people are angry, they start fighting.
Should we have them back? I think so, Prabhu. I think it's maybe just about enough. We don't have a lot no, of time. You're muted, Maharaj. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I think it's enough time. I think okay. give them a, you know, didn't give them too long, but I don't think they need too long. No. <laughs> All right. Let me just, let me give them one minute to leave. Let me round up. One minute to round up, yes? Yeah. Okay. So they've now got 59 seconds and counting down. <clears throat> you know, I sent you some things to to forward to the students. Oh yes, I I didn't see that yesterday. I saw I saw this morning, so I'll do that today. Okay. We are all back now. Okay, welcome back. So, let's have some feedback from, maybe we can begin with group one. And here's something about your discussion. How are you influenced by passion or ignorance? Who was in group one? Chaitanya Chandra Prasad, would you like to say something or um, you had in group one was Achari Nanda Prabhu, Chaitanya Chandra Prasad, Domyata Prabhu, Gadadhar Prabhu and Swamya Mataji. So like, let's a personal experience the power mode of goodness and ignorance. So normally when we go to be mode of goodness or ignorance, uh, patient, we got angry and when we go to the, the extreme, then like the fighting and other things, then it's like mood of passion, mood of ignorance. So to come out to the situation, we just silent. I'm telling my one thing, keep silence and leave this place for the time being. Either go to in front of the deity and to remember some past times. So at least change our mind for the time being, so we can at least shift our conscience to the, this mood of goodness and maintain that mood of goodness it's like the maintain the morning program and extreme uh, important is uh, maintaining external cleanliness because uh, a room is clean then at least it's a given atmosphere to maintain the mood of goodness okay so you know i i'm interested in your you, you, your own personal ideas, what you're going to do, you're going to, you say you're going to clean your room, is it? Yeah, I will maintain the cleanliness in the room and uh, maintain the morning program to maintain the mood of goodness sometimes. You live in the temple? No, not much, it's much. Hmm? You do? He does, yes. Okay. All right, so thank you. Yeah, it's a nice idea. Go in front of the deities. 
but sometimes you're so angry you think I can't go in front of the deities. <laughs> you're so you understand you're not fit to go in front of the deities. You're so much controlled by passion and and ignorance that we just want to no, I don't want to go see the deities. <laughs> so we have to be uh, have to be open, yeah. Difficult. Certainly, tendencies are there. You get angry, become violent, fighting. These things are seen. We've seen in the past. These kind of things go on. We have to be very cautious. What to be? How to deal with it? It takes the senior person to come. Sometimes a senior man has to come and just simply offer obeisances, come and beg, please accept my humble obeisances and fall at the feet. And then everybody else should also stop their fighting, they should also bow down. In this way, somehow you can uh, break through the, the passion and ignorance. Oh. Okay, what about group two? Hare Krishna Maharaj, we discussed three points. Um, first is modern technologies like smartphones or TVs and all. They're, they're very distracting and tend to be, we become uh, in the modes of passion and ignorance. So uh, practical steps to cultivate more of goodness would be like use the same smartphone um, for a better purpose like maybe on, attending online mangala or reading sessions with devotees and uh, we have like uh, zoom we use zoom quite often even for our classes and uh, bhakti rickshaws and everything so those uh, using those will help us to be in mode of goodness and the second point is uh, music like if you're hearing music, so music has a different kind of consciousness. Like for example, if it is fast music and all, so we tend to become uh, passionate and ignore, like ignorance. So uh, for that, we can hear Prabhupada uh, Kirtan first preferably. Uh, the, then the second uh, preference will be for Vaishnava bhajans and Vaishnava songs done by the devotees. So by that way, we can come to more of uh, goodness. And uh, third point is like sometimes we become uh, lazy for attending Mantati, so that time we are into more of uh, ignorance. So for that to overcome, we will uh, we need to associate with the devotees who never misses Mantati. So we have a proper association and we will be able to develop proper consciousness. Okay. Nice. Nice idea. Sometimes uh, I'm a little worried about the smartphone thing. You know that we use. You say we use a smartphone for Zoom calls and listen to classes, but the smartphone can also be used to watch cinema, and to watch Bollywood movies, and to watch cricket matches. Yes. So for that, we need to like do more reading of Prabhupada books. So we are not uh, influenced by that same thing. Mean towards watching cinema and so on. Because if you are in ignorance, if you don't read, then we tend to get carried away. Mm -hmm. Yeah. People say, oh, I, I, I'll just listen to class. And you know, they have the headset on, and you don't know what they're hearing. And nobody knows if they're watching Bollywood movie, they're hearing cricket match or what. And they, they could be. And they say, no, I'm hearing, I'm hearing. So we have to be we have to be sincere. We have to be genuine. We have to really want to uh, go to the spiritual path. Sometimes people are not so straightforward. So this this can be problems. Okay. Thank you. Anyway, thank you for your ideas. I like the the ideas. I like some of these things about. Hearing Prabhupada's bhajan, very important to hear Prabhupada. 
and Vaishnava songs, also very good to sing all the Vaishnava songs. Do more hearing and chanting, it's very powerful. All right, what about group three? Group three? We have Ananta Vilasa Hare Krishna Maharaj. We also spoke on. Uh, hey! Chud! Hey! Uh, we spoke on four topics, Maharaj. Uh, first, on cleanliness. We spoke on like how uh, we are influenced by the mode of ignorance by the unclean. And uh, we should keep uh, all things in place. Like wherever, wherever we take the stuff, it should go there and regularly clean our shelves and our personal belongings and keep the house clean. That way we can cultivate the mode of goodness. And we also sp spoke in detail about sleep, how we are influenced uh, in uh, unregulated sleeping habits, uh, which actually disrupts our schedule. We spoke on how uh, the cultivating the mode of goodness and keeping a fixed time, no matter what. Sometimes we spoke that uh, there, there might be some engagements which uh, make us stay late night up but sometimes like keeping a deadline on when we sleep and eating less so that we wake up on proper timing. Then we spoke on recreation. Uh, we said that we should have some positive recreation for in devotional service so that we are not, uh, we are not going towards the negative recreation like cinemas and all like positive recreation with family would include doing kirtan together in and going to dams, visiting dams as a family and retreats and uh, um, like uh, going as a family but uh, associating with devotees and uh, doing kirtan and all of these positive engagements and the fourth point we spoke on prasadam and health lifestyle like how eating regulating our uh, diet is also important sometimes we eat a lot of spicy stuff and uh, <clears throat> even though it's prasadam but uh, tend to eat more uh, spicy and uh, some unhealthy stuff which uh, which affects our health so regulating those also and doing exercises yoga surya namaskar to cultivate these positive things for you <laughs> okay you have a lot of ideas I I'd be interested to know how many you can implement. No, they're nice ideas, nice thinking. We hope you can implement these things in your daily lifestyle. Uh, we have to be a little cautious how much time we want to spend in these kind of things. You know, yoga, okay, a little bit yoga, but shouldn't get too much. And you know, some people, they get into yoga, it becomes like an hour, two hours, three hours sometimes, you know. It just becomes more important to them than the japa. <coughs> so these kind of things, they're, they're, they should be secondary to our devotional life. Right? Yes, ma'am. The idea, but the idea of having kirtan together, the family, very important, trying to get all the family together and have kirtan on a regular basis. Very powerful, very important. Okay, thank you Prabhu. Thank you, ma'am. Next group, where are we, number four? Um, yes, it's group number four. So, in group number four we had Indraleka Kripa Mataji, Karuna Sindhu Prabhu, Muri Govinda Prabhu, Shruti Mishra Mataji and Shyama Kunda. So, would one of you like to speak? Good yeah, Hare Krishna, Pranam from Dasdash. Hare Krishna, Karanda, Karanda Sindhu, please carry on. Yeah, we discussed about, uh, like because of our previous uh, habits and all, uh, we tend to, like Murisha, yeah, Murisha, 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 used to like saying the uh, uh, cricket. So he would chant and see cricket uh, sometime, before learning to guidance from some elder devotees, uh, senior devotees. So I was also uh, very much uh, passionate about uh, some sports and all. So I would also I also tend to watch sometimes. So that uh, habit we have to change. Mm -hmm. So that uh, as Prabhu told, we can we can take guidance of senior devotee. 
and uh, with our own discretion also and little taste in chanting and reading uh, Prabhupada books we can come over it. Then Hindulika Mataji spoke about eating. Sometimes we become get passionate and uh, we tend to uh, we feel like eating something very uh, uh, nice. We tell that we are offering it a lot, but for our desire, we may actually be towards something like sometimes pizza or something. So, for that initially, it's not bad, I feel, that we make something for, uh, something we like for pleasure of the Lord and have it. But slowly that uh, consciousness should change that, um, uh, consciousness change and we should uh, make something nice and with less spice and all to Offer to the Lord. These things we discuss. What else? <laughs> okay, thank you, Prabhu. Yeah. I know some places, some parts of the world, you know, if, if, he, if you don't have spice, people can't eat it. You know, in some other places, people, if you have spice, the people can't eat it. You know, the different people are different races, different parts of the world are accustomed to different types of. Uh, food. So some people they want a lot of spice and some people they don't want spice. So it's a lot of in the individual's preference what kind of food they're used to. Uh, Maharaj, we discussed about uh, wearing dress also. So you can, you can comment on that. About what? It also comes under wearing dress, dresses or wearing the clothes. Passionate way or some stylish way or we just sometimes dress nicely to please the Lord, to go in front of the Lord. So, would you like to throw some light on this one, Maharaj? You mean in relation to the man? Yeah, both man and woman. Well, well it uh, falls under uh, different uh, uh, this one, mode of goodness, passion. Well, no, certainly, some people think, you know, it's not very important to wear the devotee dress, but actually it is important. And, you know, it, it's not that you have to you have to wear it all the time, but at least, you know, when you come to the temple, you know, if you bring a dhoti with you, or if you keep a, do a dhoti in the temple, and you put on the dhoti, or when you're at home, you dress in the devotee clothes, when you do your puja, it does make a difference, because the dress does affect the consciousness. So we dress in the devotee clothes, it does help us to remember that we're devotees. Just like we wear neck beads, it's important for us, you know, as our dog collar. So similarly, putting on tilak and wearing the devotee dress, it, do, it does help us to develop our Krishna consciousness, to remember that we're devotees. So if you're worshipping deity at home, if you have a deity at home, you certainly would want to put on the devotee dress. You don't want to be worshipping the deity in karmi clothes, in your jeans and sweaters. So I think it is important. And not only putting on the devotee dress, but how we put on the dress is important. You know, sometimes, you know, sometimes uh, these things can also create a problem. You know, the sari, the sari is meant to cover the body. But some people will wear the sari just the opposite. That they will use. It. Uh, I had the experience. I was I was in uh, in the Philippines actually, and and we had a program. We had a college program, and the the, the students they asked me about it. They said one of these girl, one of the girls, one of the ladies who were with was with us. She hadn't dressed and she hadn't put on the sari very well. And they noticed that, you know, the way she's wearing this dress, she's exposing so much of her body. Is this, is this a purpose? So, of course, the purpose of the sari is meant to cover the body. But, you know, there's usage and there's abusage. And the same could be said for men. Some men also, the, the, the cloth, when we wrap a cloth, it's meant to cover the body. It's not meant to reveal the body. But the whole purpose of the dhoti and the chadar and everything is to cover the body. So we should try to remember these things. Okay, thank you, Maharaj. Okay, the next group. Yeah, 
Hare Krishna Raji, this is group uh, 5. So here we discuss a lot of things like for, for influence, what we have seen that we are mostly behind the luxury life, uh, uh, high five gadgets, then a big house, uh, a big car, and all these things what we have noticed that all these things we are doing because we are into the middle of uh, such people, of materialistic people, and we are also dragged into this because of our past karmic reaction. Okay? And then we also observe that sometimes we get angry for some other reason. Uh, in the mode of ignorance, uh, we are influenced by laziness too much. Uh, uh, because of that, we don't get up early in the morning. Okay, and sometimes we feel tired not to uh, do chanting or not to attend attend lectures. Again, uh, this, may, this may be because we are born into such family where all such regulative principles are not, not being followed. So to overcome all these influences, the, the best thing that we have to do we, we, we have to do is the sadhana bhakti. That's what we do, like chanting of the Maha Mantra uh, in the Brahma Mura. That's what we, we follow uh, in the group. This, this is what we have concluded. Then doing deity worship, getting early up in the morning, then offering prasadam uh, to the Lord. And because we are we are uh, karmi people, we are earning, so we do some donations also to the temple to build the temples. Uh, yeah, these are the points that we have discussed. Okay, I, I'm a, a little curious about how you're going to get up in the morning for Brahma Mahurta when you're living in a, you know, your family, if they're not devotees, non-devotees, how are you going to get up for the Brahma Mahurta? You know, they'll complain if you yeah. get up and make noise and so on, disturb them. Yeah, so, but, but that what we will have to do, we will have to... Uh, just ignore them and we have to compulsorily uh, <laughs> do it in a <laughs> mm, Yeah, it might be difficult, you know, just ignore them. <laughs> they, won't ignore, they won't ignore you, they'll have a big battle with you, they'll complain, you know. They'll tell you, go and live some other place, move out. <laughs> Maharaj, can I add on that? I was in that group. Oh, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Initially, when we started chanting, myself, my wife, and uh, when we went back to India, my older brother, he was always complaining that, why do I get up early in the morning and chant the veil? Of course, I couldn't do the Mangala Arti and other thing because they were not into Krishna consciousness at that time. And uh, so what I used to do is I used to chant, I used to get up early on my time, I used to chant. And my older brother used to argue with me so much that this is not the way to chant. You should have, you should meditate, you should focus your mind, you, you should concentrate your mind and even if you do one round, that's okay. But only what I should tell him is that Prabhupada has taught us that we have to do, we have to do our quantity and we have to, that will, quantity will bring us quality. And three months later, Maharaj, my whole family started chanting. So yeah. that was the effect of, uh, so that way we can bring the... Wonderful. Krishna yeah. example. Of course, you're coming from a Hindu family. If, if you're from a non-Hindu family, it's not going to happen so easily. That's right. But certainly in the Hindu family, it's, it, it's possible. Not, it's not so easy. Yeah, I know. But you did very well. Very nice. You had a good experience. Okay, thank you. We have one more group. Maharaj, Hare Krishna. Yes. Except my humble obeisances. Maharaj, I'm also from group 5. Can I ask something and add something? Okay. Maharaj, I usually face the problem of anger. So, it, it, it is also stepping from fear. So, I think uh, reading Srila Prabhupada's books, that is really helping me out, like giving, giving me knowledge that uh, to have enough faith in Krishna. So, when I can depend on him, I'm depending on people less, which is actually reducing my anger. Well, you know, I, I would recommend you to read also the sections in Bhagavad Gita where Krishna speaks about anger. Like he, how he, he explains that anger comes due to lust. Right? And the lust comes because we're attached to sense gratification. When we don't get what we want, then we become angry. So it's good to read these things and read also about uh, how there are three gates to hell, and one of them is anger, and 
We have to, every sane person should try to avoid this. So I, I think this, this is a good exercise for us to help to, us to overcome anger. When we see the evil side of anger and how it's really not doing us any good and how it degrades us. So reading the, the proper section of the Bhagavad Gita where Krishna is explaining anger can help. The, but that, that tendency is definitely there. We're in the mode of passion and from passion comes anger. In the mode of passion, anger will come. So we all... Precisely why I get angry is sometimes my in-laws, they try to badmouth me and they try to let me down in front of my husband and the whole series of proving myself and then the anger comes. But then the more I'm reading, I have started to believe, okay, maybe Krishna wants me to go through this, this phase of being defamed, so it's all right. But there are times I really get angry, so... Well, you have to remember that you, now you're a devotee, you, that you represent Krishna consciousness, so they have to see, they should see the good qualities. They should, you know, if they see you becoming angry, they'll certainly wonder what kind of spiritual practice is this you're doing. You're so angry, it's not the proper behavior of a devotee, right? So the ornament, remember the, the qualities of a devotee, tolerance and merciful, these kind of things. Tiktikshava, karunika, suridam, sarvadi, seeing everybody equal. We don't have any enemy like this. And so you should reflect on these kind of qualities and try to get over this tendency to become angry. It's, it's really just... Con you have to control your mind. One thing you could also do, you could go out. Instead of getting angry and screaming and arguing at people, just say, oh, I, I'm going out. Just take your bead bag and go out for a walk. Or go up on the roof of the building where you live, go on the roof and just chant there, or go in the garden or go to a park, go and chant. Or as you said, you simply take a book and you start reading. That's also very good. Don't give sway to the anger when it comes, right? You have to control it. Okay, very good, thank you. So can we, we'll, we'll go on to the next group. One more group, I think, is it? Or maybe, have we finished? Yes, Sauru Prabhu, you are. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Janak Pranam. Hare Krishna. Uh, most of the points actually have been taken, Maharaj, already. Already been so, taken, eh? What about your points? How are you going to cultivate the mode of goodness? Okay, so we, we are group were influenced by too much sleep or irregular sleep and eating too spicy or oily or fried food, second thing. And third was uh, the work-related or workspace passion, which we generally have in metropolitan cities and maybe other also. So about the sleep, we discussed that if we can have regulated sleep, where we sleep and wake on the same time, and maybe we do not uh, do any day sleep in, the, uh, in our daytime, and uh, if we can prepare the sadhana chart also, and get, getting it checked with some senior devotees. Okay, that's a good idea, that's a new point, the sadhana chart, do a sadhana chart and get it checked by senior devotees, very nice idea, yeah. <laughs> regarding uh, and no late late time dinners also Maharaj if we, if we can avoid that oh so yes we shouldn't eat much at night that's not good don't eat at night right when I became a devotee Prabhupada had instructed all the devotees he said no grains after four in the afternoon so no grains after four you know most people when I tell this to people, most people, they screw up their face. They say, well, I have my main meal. They have their main meal 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock at night, which is really not the time to eat. It's, a, it's more the time to think about sleep <laughs> rather than eating, you know. So try to, get, try to get your main meal in the day. The Ayurveda, 
Ayurveda teaches the same as Chinese medicine. In China also they have the similar custom. In Ayurveda, the power of digestion is controlled by the position of the sun. So when the sun is at the highest, at its peak in the middle of the day, that's when the power of digestion is strongest. And that's the best time to eat. But, of course, most people working in jobs and offices, and difficult for them, they can't get it. But you should try, that's the best time. You don't want to be eating, and definitely for devotees, we want to wake up early in the morning, but if we eat at night, heavy meal, difficult to wake up. So very good points, yes, very nice. Thank you very much, Prabhu. Thank Maharaj, you. can I add something to that? Yes, please. Um, this wasn't discussed in the group, we didn't have time, it's just from my experience I wanted to share. Uh, like many devotees mentioned about, uh, you know, going to bed early and waking up early in the morning. And especially for those who are in the cities. I mean, now that I'm in Mayapur, it's not much of a problem, but yes, for when I was living in city years ago, uh, one senior devotee helped me in this way, like, the sleep cycle uh, doesn't, one cannot just abruptly change one's sleep cycle. Like, if one is used to going to bed at 10 o'clock, then immediately the next day he can go at 8, but then it's going to fall off soon. So the very practical way is to turn back your clock. Like, for one week, you, you know, unroll your clock for half an hour. If you're going to bed at 10, then you try to go at 9.30. And then the next week, you, you know, down it further, like 10, 15 minutes. Then eventually, over a period of time, then the body gets accustomed to that kind of uh, system. Because if we try to do abruptly, we will go on for some time, but then it will fall off. That's what I was doing when I was a student, and it did help me uh, to get up early and then chant my rounds and go to the, you know, my college or whatever. So that, that usually helps in a practical way, otherwise uh, one may, like, you know, may not sustain that for a long time. So I just wanted to add that comment. Okay, very good. Thank you very much. Yes. Yeah, don't try to make big jumps. <laughs> try to be realistic about our capabilities and take it step by step. Sometimes you have step by step. And just like Prabhupada explained to, uh, I think it was Sham Sundar Prabhu, when Sham Sundar Prabhu was smoking. And Prabhupada came and told him, he said, you know, don't let this thing stand between you and Krishna consciousness. But he said, well, Prabhupada, I smoke 20 a day. So Prabhupada told him, he said, that, so tomorrow you smoke 19, and then the next day you smoke 18. <laughs> and in this way, gradually you give up smoking. Okay. All right, any other comments or questions on this ch oh, chapter? Are we okay? Let me go back to the PowerPoint. Are you able to see it? Yes, Maharaj, we can see it. Yes, no problem. Okay. Okay, so here you can see a su summary of the three modes and the characteristics in each mode. We'll just go ahead. Some quotes from Prabhupada. From the third chapter, text 37 Purpur. If therefore the mode of passion, instead of being degraded into the mode of ignorance, is elevated to the mode of goodness by the prescribed method of living and acting, then one can be saved from the degradation of wrath by spiritual attachment. So, <laughs> the degradation of wrath, we should understand that tendency to, to become angry is degradation, it's not doing us any good. We should be very careful to try to, come, to get rid of it and to control it, to curb it. So Prabhupada explains the prescribed method of living and acting. Or you could simply say hearing and chanting, if you like. 
but this will help us to cultivate the mode of goodness. Okay, we'll go ahead. One relevant verse from the Srimad Bhagavatam, second canto, first, uh, second chapter, first canto. Right? As soon as irrevocable loving service is established in the heart, the effects of nature's modes of passion and ignorance, such as lust, desire, hankering, disappear. Then the devotee is established in goodness, he becomes happy. So this is the idea. Lust, desire, hankering, calm, crowed, lobe, these things, it's all the mode of passion. We have to remove it to become fixed in the mode of goodness, to get established in that mode of goodness. We have to get rid of the passion and ignorance. And how to become liberated? Here's the verse. Lord Krishna has given us how to become liberated. Translation 1426, right? Come to the level of Brahman. A quote from Prabhupada from the second chapter. Someone like to read? Can someone read? Yeah. Okay. Radha Kishori Mataji. Hare Krishna. Quality of goodness will automatically be there. This Krishna consciousness movement is directly offering the spiritual platform which is above the mode of goodness. The quality of goodness will automatically be there. Any person who is in Krishna consciousness, his quality of goodness, namely, he does not indulge in illicit sex life, he does not smoke even, or take tea or coffee even, he does not eat any forbidden food stuff, neither he takes part in unnecessary gambling. So, good character is immediately there. Bhagavad Gita 240 to 45, Los Angeles, December 13, 1968. Okay, very clear, practical instruction quality of goodness automatically be there when we follow the regulative principles. Hmm. And some more quote? Someone read please. Yes, who can read? Yeah, I want to read. <clears throat> the present human civilization is of course grossly misled by the modes of passion and ignorance. It is a very dangerous age and all nations should take care to provide the easiest process. Krishna consciousness to save humanity from the greatest danger. Right. The mode of passion and ignorance, very dangerous. Very dangerous. Because so easily war can erupt and People fight, kill each other, do so much harm, ruin relationships. So to save humanity, we have to have Krishna consciousness. Yes? Go on reading Prabhu. Because people have no education in actual knowledge, they become irresponsible. To stop this irresponsibility, education for developing the mode of goodness of the people in general must be there. Yeah, yeah. Just, there's a bit more, just finish. Even if the majority of the people aren't happy and prosperous, if a certain percentage of the population develops Krishna consciousness and becomes situated in a mode of goodness, then there is a possibility for peace and prosperity all over the world. Thank you. So even a certain percentage of the population, doesn't have to be a lot of people. Prabhupada said, one moon is better than many stars, right? So, Prabhupada would talk also about the, the snowball, the snowball symptom. You roll the, the snowball, the snowball, as you roll it in the snow, it becomes bigger and bigger. So Krishna consciousness is like that. One or two people, a small number of people, and gradually it spreads more and more people. And in this way the whole world can be changed. So even people are not happy or prosperous, but if we can somehow give them Krishna consciousness, 
then we can have change in the world situation. All right, so there, here's the objectives on chapter 14. Uh, we covered the modes of nature and we discussed how to transcend the modes based on 1426. 1426, how do you transcend the modes of nature? What do you need to do? Rajavidya Prabhu, how do we transcend the modes of nature? Srigarbha uh, Prabhu want to answer. Okay, Srigarbha. Uh, we can do in the personal service, chanting, hearing. Yeah, we simply have to engage in devotional service, right? We have to, you know, just throw our hands up in the air, oh, Krishna, <laughs> right? And then grab your bead bag and start chanting. All right, and then we spoke also these different things. We discussed how we're influenced by passion and ignorance and how we can cultivate mood of goodness. And we've just heard a few of Prabhupada's statements about his mood and mission, how we can make the world Krishna conscious. A final quote by Prabhupada. Someone please read. Yeah, by understanding this knowledge, there is with attain perfection and transfer to the spiritual world. The Lord now explains the same knowledge in a better way. This knowledge is far, far superior to all other processes of knowledge does far explain. And knowing this many attain perfection, thus it is expected that one who understands this 14th chapter will attain perfection. Bhagavad Gita 14.1.1. Jai! Shri yeah. Prabhupada Ki Jai. Okay, we're going to go on to next chapter. Oh. Is everyone able to see the slideshow? Huh? Not seeing it, huh? Oh, Maharaj. Oh, oh, yeah. Okay. Let me, I have to close it then. I have to, maybe I have to share the slide again now. Yes, Maharaj, you share the screen. Uh huh. Are we seeing this? You can see? Yeah? Yes, Maharaj, we can see. Yes, Maharaj, we can see. Okay, good. Okay, we finished chapter 14. Krishna Maharaj, I have a question. Right? What's the question? when uh, new people come in our Krishna consciousness so uh, it is our contention we should simultaneously tell them about mode of goodness also because they are having some of mode of passion and ignorance qualities so with bhakti we should introduce mode of goodness also to them that they should transcend to mode of goodness simultaneously with bhakti well we want to encourage them in Krishna conscious activities you know, and if they, if, if they take up the Krishna conscious activities, then naturally they will come to the mode of goodness. Like Maharaj, personally I've seen many new devotees, they, uh, they are sometimes uh, asking questions like they use excessive cosmetics and jewellery and they tend to say that we are uh, decorating our body to, to please Krishna. 
but actually they are they are feeding their senses to beauty means to look more beautiful and to dress in such a manner well you have to be con you have to be patient with people you know give them time let them chant and let them understand krishna consciousness more Prabhupada gave the rules that he, he, he wasn't too, too much eager in putting these kind of principles into people. He just encouraged them, chant Hare Krishna and take prasadam and gradually they will naturally give these things up. It simply takes some time. You just have to be patient. Don't try to you know, tell them, oh you can't do this, no we can't do, you can't wear all this jewelry, no you can't make up, put on makeup. No, just let them chant Hare Krishna and gradually they'll get purified. That's what I think you should be doing. I wouldn't worry too much about the fact that people are, you know, you go to a temple anywhere in the world today, you go to an ISKCON temple, you see the ladies all wear makeup, you know. And, you know, it's just part of the world. You live in the material world. There's certain standards and things people do. They have to wear jewelry. They're in a particular level of society. They do these things. You know, don't worry about it. It's not too important. The important thing is that they are chanting Hare Krishna. And they have devotion for Krishna. I think that's more important. So that, consciousness matters most. Huh? Consciousness matters most. Yeah, con con well, the consciousness will come by chanting Hare Krishna. We want Krishna consciousness, right? For, for, you could say first become conscious and then become Krishna conscious. <laughs> okay. okay, thank you. All right, we're going ahead. We want to revise. We've covered this. Uh, Going into chapter 15, would someone please read this quote here? Yeah, from Maharaj Alvin. <clears throat> Association with material nature entangles him. In, in his constitutional position, a living entity is above the three modes of material nature. But association with material nature entangles him in the, the different modes of material nature, goodness, passion, and ignorance. Due to the association of these three modes, his desire to dominate the material world is there. Hmm. So Prabhupada is making the point that the living entity is above the modes of nature, but due to association, due to the association, we have this effect that we want to dominate the material world. So a little more. By engagement in devotional service in full Krishna consciousness, he is immediately situated in a transcendental position and his unlawful desire to control material nature is removed. Bhagavad Gita 14.264. Yeah, just like in, in relation to the, the lady's question just now, she's talking that someone's wearing a lot of jewelry, a lot of makeup. All right, they're not living in the temple though. If somebody's, of course, somebody's living in the temple, we wouldn't want that so much. If somebody's coming to live in the temple, that live in the ashram, you know, there's a, you don't want to encourage them so much in that, that manner. But they're living outside, they're living at home, or maybe working in job. So they have, they have a particular norm, standard makeup and dressing and so on. But the important thing is to encourage them to become Krishna conscious. And here also Prabhupada is saying, engagement in devotional service, then we'll come to the transcendental position. And so get people to chant, get them to do service, and naturally they'll forget about all these things. That unlawful desire to control material nature is removed by Krishna consciousness. So the more that you, we cannot enforce people. This is the point. But if we, you know, if we start trying to put rules, you can't do this, you can't do that. Then nobody will become Krishna conscious. But we give them the higher taste. Let them get attracted, chanting and dancing. Then they, they won't worry about all the, these other things. So forget about all this unlawful desire 
to control material nature. So we have to understand how things work. All right, lesson six. Uh, lesson two. Oh, well, here's lesson two. This is actually we're, what lesson three, right? Banyan tree and Purushottam Yoga. Purushottam Yoga, the title of the chapter 15 of the Bhagavad Gita, Yoga of the Supreme Person, or Purushottam Yoga. And also the Banyan tree will be described. Bhagavad Gita, chapter 15, we can see. One, two, three, sec four sections, right? Not a big chapter. Banyan tree, first of all. We'll hear about the banyan tree and how we have to get detached from this banyan tree, the important feature in material life, to get detached. <laughs> so we're going to hear transmigration, we'll hear, and then how Krishna is the maintainer, and then summary of Vedanta Sutra. So first of all, the banyan tree. Entanglement of this material world is compared here to a banyan tree. All right, we've, sh we've shown, you can see the picture, the reflection of the tree on the water. So the banyan tree, there's a big one in Calcutta Botanical Gardens, very big one. And go and see it, it's really huge. So some, sometimes these banyan trees, they, you know, of course they're special trees, they're sacred trees, we don't cut them, we worship them. And Lord Shiva, he has his home under a banyan tree. So, the banyan tree is situated on desire, the reflection, reflected on desire, our desires. We have desires, right? We all have a lot of desires, material desires, and there's this, this banyan tree is reflected on desire. And then the nature of this banyan tree is the roots are up and the branches are down. The roots are up. We've put, in, we've put the Sanskrit term Urva mulam, urva mulam, mula, the root, and urva, upwards. The root is up. This is a special, and the branches, they're down. Ada sakam. The sakka, the branches are ada, downward. So this is a very special tree, you can see, see and the, the leaves of the tree, they represent the Vedic hymns, the leaves, very colourful, sometimes very nice, beautiful, but they also wither. So the Vedic hymns, they give temporary benefits like that. And then the tips of the branches compared to senses, and the twigs, the sense objects. So like the different parts of the tree are compared to different parts, different items. Okay, I have to go ahead. Oh, another item. Asanga Shastrena Dridrena Chitva. Asanga Shastrena, meaning cut down this strongly rooted tree with the weapon of detachment. Right? The banyan tree is very strongly rooted because the branches go into the ground. So it's very difficult to get out, to get free of it. It's not like an ordinary tree. So how to get free? We have to cut. You have to have an axe. You have to cut the, rooted, the roots out, well, cut the branches to get out, and the, the weapon is detachment. So this is an important point in the tree. Prabhupada explains. Someone can read? Can I? Yes. Just like 
if you have to keep yourself the legs are up and the head down somebody keeps you like this how long you will feel comfortable if somebody takes your legs and catches you your head down then it is not very comfortable so this whole world material world is like that urdhva moolam the moolam should have been down but it is up therefore it is uncomfortable okay just a bit more another explanation is the it is perverted reflection we have got experience of the urdhva moolam on the bank of a river or the bank of a pond tree is standing but the reflection we we find that the same tree has become urdhva moolam or adhar shakham so by this statement krishna says that this is not real that reflection in the water of the tree is not real real tree is up similarly real enjoyment real varieties everything is in the spiritual world it is simply reflection it is not fact therefore our enjoyment here is called maya or illusion bhagavad gita 5.1 bombay february 26 1974 right so this example of the banyan tree is used to show us how we're trying to enjoy the illusion the maya so this example is meant to help us to cultivate detachment from the material world understanding that it's not actually real that simply the reflection is there any real pleasure in the reflection the reflection is not real so in the same way material world this material world is simply a, ref a reflection it is not actually real so all, all the enjoyment so called enjoyment which we have in this world is also illusion right asanga shastrena dridena chitva remember we spoke about who remembers the cutting to get free from the strongly rooted tree we have to do this asanga shastrena dridena chitva someone please read Somebody wants to do it? Yeah, I will do it. Okay. okay good. Go ahead. Uh, to get out of the entanglement of this strong banyan tree of material life, one must surrender to Krishna. As soon as one surrenders unto Krishna, one becomes detached automatically from this material extension. Right. From, we become detached from this material extension. <laughs> the material extension this material world this is the material extension and to get detached what do we have to do we simply have to surrender to krishna and surrender to krishna that can get us out of this material life free from this material world oh okay so this is the the very nice verse which is given nirmana moha jita sanga dosha adhyatma nitya vinivata kama tan ver vimukta sukha dukha sange gachanti amutam padam avyayam tat i have to change the fonts i'm sorry this is a different computer i'm using so the fonts are not right someone please read from the purpose krishna madhari madhari and those who are free from false prestige illusion and false association who understand the eternal who are done with material lust who are freed from the dualities of happiness and distress and who unbewildered know how to surrender unto the supreme person attain to the eternal kingdom all right so we have to get free from these things this these 
these uh, doshas, these faults which we have, the false prestige, the illusion, the false association. We have to finish with lust, free from dualities. It sounds quite a difficult thing. How to do it? How to get rid of all these things? We have to know how to surrender unto Krishna. That's it, the process. Simply surrender to Krishna. And all of these faults, all of these things, they're all taken away. So, with the weapon of detachment, with that weapon of detachment. So, Okay, next verse describes. The supreme abode of mind is not illuminated by the sun or moon, nor by fire or electricity. Those who reach it never return to the material world. Bhagavad Gita 15.6. Right. Now, in the previous verse, we were reading 15.15, and Krishna was describing how we can attain to that eternal kingdom, the spirit to his eternal abode. So that the first five verses in this chapter, they're describing about our weakness of heart. The weakness of heart, which is stopping us from taking up fully Krishna consciousness, right? And describing what we need to do. And then the chapter goes on, Krishna starts speaking because he was describing you can attain to the supreme abode. So what is that supreme abode like? So Krishna describes it here in this verse. And there's only a few verses, only a couple of verses I think in the Bhagavad Gita, two or three verses about the, the spiritual world. But it is mentioned here. So that supreme abode, no need of sun or moon. No need of fire or electricity. And those who come, come, reach it never come back to this world. All right? Prabhu can go on reading. Yeah. What is this foolishness? Why should you pay the electricity bill? Go there and live there. There is no need of. Natad Bhasiti. It is the spiritual it is the spiritual world is not lightened by the sun moon because everyone is effulgent every planet is effulgent so therefore there is no need of these things there is no ignorance there is no scarcity there is no miserable condition hmm. okay Bhagavatam 328 21 Nairobi November 1st 1975 hmm. And no need of electricity, one no need to pay the electric bill. Isn't that nice? You can have heating, you can have lighting, you don't have to worry about the electric bill. We always, we always have to worry all the, the electric bill. But in the spiritual world, no problem. Everything is effulgent. So, Prabhupada comments in relation to this information in his purport. He said, one should be captivated by this information. He should desire to transfer himself to that eternal world and extricate himself from this false reflection of reality. Just like people become so fascinated, so captivated by India, you know, when, when we were young people, young devotees, we were so captivated, we wanted so much to come to India and to be in India. And sometimes people in India, they're so captivated with the thought of going to the West. And they will do everything. They want so much to go there. I, I remember one young Chinese person I met, they wanted so much to go to the West that in 
in order to get the scholarship, they had memorized every word in the dictionary. Every word in the dictionary, they'd remembered, the, they'd studied the dictionary so carefully, they'd memorized every word and the meaning. They were in preparation for their exam so that they could get, they wanted so much to go to the West and to study. So we, as devotees, we should also desire to go to the eternal world. We want to go there to be with Krishna. We should want it very badly. This is, uh, Prabhupada is encouraging us in this verse. We should desire like that. Okay, an exercise. Preaching application. Oh, can we, will we do it in groups again? Krishna Keshava yeah, Prabhu? I can, yeah. I, can, I can break the group. You can break the group, Prabhu? Yeah? How many? Just like last time, like five... Five, six people in a group? Yeah, the 31 years old would have five groups if you break that. Yeah. Make a list of significant philosophical points relevant for preaching Krishna consciousness from Bhagavad Gita 157 and 1515 verses and purports.
Yes, have we got some points, Mariji? Yes, I got some from 15.15. Um, like, like Prabhupada is saying about this verse that it's saying like, why Krishna is to me, like Krishna is saying of all the Vedas, I am to be known. So the purpose of the Veda is to know Krishna. Oh, okay. And from uh, 15.7, we are having that we are part and parcel of uh, the eternal uh, entity, like uh, living entities are eternal fragmentary parts of Krishna. Uh huh. So, so they should become Krishna conscious, right? Yes. That is our, the, our position. It is the real position. Good. And uh, because it's saying about like relevant to preaching in Krishna consciousness, uh, like here in the purport, uh, for Prabhupada uh, is writing that, you know how, why some people, if they don't want to take Bhagavad Gita as being authorized, why it, why it has to be authorized, so that he's explaining, you know, that, uh, that he's worshipable, like Lord Krishna is worshipable, and thus he's saying the God is all good and God is all merciful. Usually people have these complaints that, you know, what the God is doing is doing nothing. We are the ones who are doing kind of thing. So this also verse from the Purport, it says that God is very good and he is very merciful. And he has given us the Veda so that we can understand. Okay, very good. Thank you. Thank you. Not only all pervading, he is also localized in every individual heart. He awards the different. Not only as the impersonal Brahma, the Supreme Godhead, and the localized Paramatma, but as the form of the incarnation of the Vedas as well. And the Vedas give the right direction to people so they so that they can properly mold their lives and come back to the Godhead, back to home. The Vedas offer knowledge of the Supreme Person God in Krishna and Krishna in his incarnation as Vyasadeva, the compiler of the Vedanta Sutra. The commentation on the Vedanta Sutra by Vyasadeva in the Srimad Bhagavatam gives a real understanding of Vedanta Sutra. The Supreme Lord is so <coughs> full that for deliverance of the conditioned soul, he is the supplier and digestion. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Is everyone back from the rooms? Um, I don't know Maharaj. 
as why did I come out of the room? I I thought everybody's come. Yeah, I, I closed the rooms. Are they still in the rooms? I thought I closed them. Yes. Yeah, everyone's back? Yeah, everybody's looks like back. Yeah. Okay, very good. Yeah, Maharaj. All right, so can we have some response about what did you find? What did you come up with? How are we going to preach to these uh, people? Uh, group one. Yeah, okay, group one, yes, a spokesman. Yeah, who's that? Uh, who was in group one? Sorry. Sachinandan Prabhu. Okay, okay, sorry, I, I did just didn't remember we, uh, the group number. Okay, fine. Uh, we could just discuss, we could just read uh, this uh, part of 7.7 .7 and, uh, uh, sorry, 15.7 and just discuss on that first, we can move forward. So, the three points which we discussed that uh, uh, it explains that living entity are, are eternal, Jeeva Bhuta Sanatana. So, uh, in the, it's in the purpose, purpose states clearly that even uh, they are not, I mean, even after liberation, they're not going to merge inside the Brahman. So, this is an important point to understand and reach that to, uh, maybe to, uh, to remove the conception of oneness or voidness. At, uh, of Mayavad, that living entity are always eternal. They are not gonna, uh, even in material world and also in spiritual world, they are eternal. Okay, that's a good point. point. Yes, thank you very much. Okay, let's take a point from each group. We'll hear group two. Can you give one point? So in the in the, in the chapter, uh, sorry, in the uh, first number, number eight, I got some point that uh, uh, mostly the gen general, pe gen general people know that uh, after the uh, body, uh, inhalations of the body, everything is finished. So we can preach that it's not uh, not uh, right philosophy uh, because we are a spirit soul. So after the inhalation of body, we still exist and we will get the, another type of body. Okay, so we can use it to present re reincarnation. Yes, right. Okay, thank you very much. Yes, group three. Group three, yes. Just one point from your discussion. Group three, we had Chetina Chandra Prabhu, Damodar Dinapavan Prabhu, Somya Mataji, Soro. Yes? Please speak. Uh, so we have 
have to use the tenekanus in a proper way and if we misuse that tenekanus uh, we will be eternal our condition and if we use the independence in a proper way then we will be completely liberated all right so we have qualities as krishna has qualities we have similar qualities as krishna because everything comes from god so our qualities are similar And we want to use our independence. We have a little independence. We have to be careful how we use our independence. We shouldn't think we're God, right? We should remember. All right. Group four. All right, group four. Sir, so, um, um, so there was one really nice point of how um, Krishna says that um, for me comes remembrance, knowledge, and forgetfulness. So, like, um, Krishna is aware of our past, present, and future, but we don't know. So, like, for example, in our childhood, we did like many things, but we don't remember. And our parents wouldn't remember everything in detail because forgetfulness is in our nature. But if we always stay in constant touch with Krishna, then he will give us the mercy and um, guidance to remember who he is and our um, position in the spiritual world. Okay, so we want to cultivate more our consciousness of Krishna and our relationship with Krishna in the spiritual world and not be overwhelmed by affection for the family members. Yes. <laughs> Interesting. Yes. Thank you. Group 5. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, we, we thought that uh, when we do, we, while preaching we could ask someone that when you do something for people, do you seek appreciation? Do you want to be acknowledged at least? So obviously the answer would be yes. And then we could go on to say that, you know, Krishna does so much. He is even there as Paramatma, which is such a thankless job. Because we don't even look at him or even acknowledge that he's there just to take care of us. He's taking care of our needs from A to Z, but we hardly even acknowledge him. So, uh, and just acknowledging and feeling grateful that how, how kind a father he is. All right. So some appreciation for Krishna, how he's providing for us, maintaining us. Thank you, Maharaji. Number, tech group number six. I can uh, speak about the words of 1515. Yes. Um, like... Uh, um, if you were uh, discussing that how um, like the purpose of this uh, uh, I mean Krishna is saying the, pur uh, the, the purpose of the Vedas is to know him and uh, here like uh, in the purport uh, Prabhupada is also writing that, that the God is all good and all merciful so people there are people who actually accept Bhagavad Gita but not knowing the purpose of the Bhagavad Gita is to know God and you know how to reach Him through devotional service. So that's the purpose which is given in the Vedas. And Krishna is saying that I'm the knower of that Veda. So that means like when He is saying we need to uh, take that uh, you know uh, instruction from Him to understand. All right. Yes. Good. Krishna is the knower of the Vedas, and if we hear the Vedas, then we will understand, we should understand Krishna. Right, we have to hear from Krishna. All right, thank you very much. So we can see a lot of philosophical points there in these two verses. And certainly we can use them for preaching in different places. Here's another exercise which we could look at very briefly. Prabhupada a quote from Prabhupada's lecture, unless we forget completely, actually we cannot enjoy. <laughs> so, how can we understand this concept? 
to enhance our sadhana bhakti. Unless we forget completely, actually we cannot enjoy. If we remember all the suffering we've been through in this material world, all the misery we've gone through, then it's very difficult to try to enjoy. The idea, <laughs> this concept to enhance our practice of sadhana bhakti, unless we forget completely, forget completely all the misery, all the, everything which happened to us in the past, we cannot enjoy. Prabhupada saying, can anyone see how, to, how this could enhance our practice of sadhana bhakti? We're so absorbed in the service of Krishna, you forget everything, even the bodily demands. Eh? Yes, yes. Okay, good. Thank you. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Dandat Pranam. I like this verse 14, Aham Maiso Naro Bhutva. It will be very, very practical to tell the people that whatever, even the very existence of our life, like <coughs> inhaling and exhaling also, is the grace of the Lord. And even the food, what we eat, how it is getting digested. It, these are very simple things which we can express them about the divinity and the inconceivable energies of the Lord. Hmm. Okay, but you're not relating to this point here, that we have to forget everything. No, no, uh, you said no, from 7 to 15, so... Oh, oh we, fini we finished that exercise. That's what I started in next one. Yeah, we're going on. Yeah, we're going on to something else. Yeah. Satyanandan mm. Prabhu. Hare Krishna Maharaj. So, unless you forget completely, I mean... Uh, Unless you forget the small, small uh, things or uh, mis I mean, the small, small petty quarrels which we have with maybe with our family members, maybe some devotees or things, uh, we'll, uh, if we do not forget them, we'll be completely filled up and uh, we won't be able to concentrate at all on our sadhana or on our chanting or on any devotional service. So these things are to be forgotten, forgiven. So it's important. Okay. You want to do your sadhana, you should forget everything. Forget, forget you have to go to work, forget you have a family, <laughs> forget you have any debts or anything. Just do your bhakti. <laughs> Just forget everything. Okay, we'll go ahead. Thank you very much. We have one more hand raise. Oh, there's another hand raise, yeah? Raise very much. So, uh, we should forget any, like, uh, uh, bad dealings with Vaishnavas and all. Uh, so, we should not think about this person, he, he uh, told something bad about me or did like this. Then, we would be able to process more nicely. If we keep it in mind, then it won't be nice. Yes, we have grudges. If we have grudges and hold bitterness against someone, it's certainly not good for our Krishna consciousness. Right. Okay. Thank you, Maharaj Yeah. Okay. Just going on here. Chapter 14, text number 4. We quote this verse. Oh, yeah, we, we finished. We studied this verse, right? Yes. Okay. So, coming to Vedanta Krit. 1515. Vedanta Krit, Vedavid, Eva Chaham. As already explained, the Lord in His incarnation as Vyasadeva compiled the Vedanta Sutra. Here, the Lord is giving in summary the contents of the Vedanta Sutra. The contents of Vedanta Sutra. Three verses, 15, 
16 and then 15, 17, 15, I think like that, Vedanta Sutra. It's a mini Vedanta Sutra in the Bhagavad Gita. Right? Tri Sloki Gita, essence of the Vedas, described in three verses, 16, 17 and 18. It's the Tri Sloki Gita. One verse is Sambandha, one is Abhidaya, one is Prayojana. Verse 16, there are two classes of being, the fallible and the infallible. In the material world, every living entity is fallible. And in the spiritual world, every living entity is called infallible. The spiritual world, they're all liberated souls, so they're infallible. But we're conditioned souls, we're the fallible. So that's verse 16. Then 17 describes, besides these two, there is the greatest living personality, the Supreme Soul, the imperishable Lord Himself, who has entered the three worlds and is maintaining them. And then 18, because I am transcendental, beyond both the fallible and the infallible, and because I am the greatest, I am celebrated both in the world and in the Vedas as that Supreme Person. Text 19 says, Janati Purushottamam sa Sarvavit. Whoever knows me as the Supreme Personality of Godhead without doubting is the knower of everything. Oh, sorry. From the purport of text 19, one should submissively hear from Bhagavad Gita that these living entities are always subordinate to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Anyone who is able to understand this, according to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna, knows the purpose of the Vedas. Bhajatimam Sarva Bhavena Bharata He therefore engages himself in my full devotional service, in full devotional service to me, O son of Bharata. Right? Text 19. And then from the purport of 20. In this chapter, the first five verses describe the process of freeing oneself from these weaknesses of heart. And the rest of the chapter, from verse 6, through the end discusses Purushottam Yoga. So we had a very brief overview of chapter 15. We heard about the banyan tree, the analogy of the banyan tree, the different parts of the tree. The meaning of Purushottam Yoga with reference to Bhagavad Gita 16 to 20 meaning of Purushottam Yoga, that we should all surrender to Krishna, we should engage in devotional service. And we discussed also the application of 15.7, 15.15, preaching Krishna consciousness. One final quote from Srila Prabhupada. Would someone like to read? Oh, really? Oh, I'm sorry, let me... I'm not sharing the screen. This is terrible. Now you can see it? Oh, I have... have... Alright. As long as a living entity is 
in this dark material world, he is in conditional life. But as soon as he reaches the spiritual sky, cutting through the false perverted tree of this material world, he becomes liberated. Then there is no chance of his coming back here. In this conditional life, the living entity considered himself to be the lord of this material world, but in his liberated state, he enters into the spiritual kingdom and becomes an associate of the Supreme Lord. There he enjoys eternal bliss, eternal life and full knowledge. So you didn't see any of these slides then? From here, right? Vedanta, Vedanta Krit 1515, Trisloki Gita, Trisloki Gita verses 16 to 18, which is the essence of the Veda in three verses. Then we quoted 16, 17, and 18. Three verses, the Trisloki Gita, and then coming into 19. And 20. All right, so. So we've covered very briefly chapter 15. We'll look at it a bit more tomorrow and we'll go on to chapter 16. Are there any questions? Yes. That is for reading. Okay. Okay. Anybody else has any question? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Maharaj, since we are discussing about this forgetfulness and remembrance, uh, there's a question. Uh, Maharaj, when somebody is out of envy, when somebody is hurting us constantly, where we have to uh, mingle with them and do the services, should we take it as this is Krishna's um, will and wish, where I have to face that devotee continuously? and do the service also or should I take it in other way and stay away from them? Well, you have to consider the circumstances more. Are you, are you, are you able to uh, find another service? Mm. Are you able to find somebody else to do your service, what you're supposed to do, is someone else able to do it, if it's difficult for you in that situation. If you give up the service, there's another person there to take your place. And if you're going to go off, are, are you, have you got another service to do? The service is the important thing. Um, well, this pain, this is the mind, right? This, this pain is the mind. It's your, our, our own mind which is giving us the pain. There's nothing really uh, physical there. It's simply the, our own ego which is suffering. We could think that Krishna has put me in this situation for my purification. Okay. A person is giving you a difficult time. You know, you just have to, sometimes we just have to tolerate that, that you know, th thank you very much, you know. And, and, you know. Sometimes, some people, they like to give other people difficult times. And if they see they're really troubling you, they enjoy it. But if, if the person sees that, you know, you're not really disturbed, although they're trying to give you a difficult time, you're, you're not really disturbed, then they won't bother. They won't 
waste their time because they know they, they can't disturb you. But if they see that you're really disturbed and shaken up, they'll give you more trouble. And so you have to, you know, you have to consider the situation. It's, it's really just our own mind which is disturbed. And the person may not actually be conscious that they're giving you a difficult time. It may just simply be you, that you're thinking they're giving you a, diff a difficult time. Yes, so, you know, you, you, wherever you go, where, whatever service you're doing, you can find these kind of situations. So just, just changing your situation is not going to change your karma. So Krishna says, tate nu kampam su samikshamana, that one who tolerates and goes on with the service, then he's the unalloyed devotee, that you tolerate all adverse conditions, accepting them to be reactions due to your past sin, but go on with your devotional service, then you become very dear to Krishna and you, be, you have a rightful claim to go back to Godhead. So I would encourage you to tolerate it and to go on and, and not to get thrown off by this other person. Just, you know, laugh about it and go on with your service. I'll try my best. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, just hold on, the holy name of Krishna. Krishna is with you everywhere. Any other questions? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Maharaj has said that uh, this 15.6 to 15.8 is the three shloki Gita and it's like essence of all the Vedas. So he's not able to understand it, how it is in the Sambandha with the Virgin. We are just reading the translation of it. Just didn't seem to be like there, like a bee there. That, um, that is a process, like it doesn't seem to be in the Vedas Bhakti and like these three verses. And also, I wanted to know that how uh, it is that uh, we have we had a Chaturshri Loki Gita in the 10th chapter, 10.8 to uh, like uh, 8, 9, 10, and 11. Uh, and then we have three, three Shloki Gita here. So. Uh, uh, this is like something given by Acharyas that these four verses are, will be Chaturshloki Gita, these three verses will be three Shloki Gita. So what is the concept behind that? Yeah, I'm just looking, I'm just trying to check myself uh, how it's mentioned. I'm, uh, I'm looking here in Bury John Prabhu's uh, book, which is uh, Surrender Unto Me. All right, so uh, text 19 is the Abhidaya, the process. Text 19. Text 19. Uh, so you said 15.16 to 18, you referred them to each other, the three Shloki Gita. Yeah, the three Shloki Gita is 16 to 18. That's, okay. that's more Sambandha. But text 19 is the Abhidaya, and text 20 is the Prayojana, the goal. 16 to 18 just include the Sambandha. Right. Okay, then 19 you said... Uh, right, I'll just, I'll just read it to you okay. here. Just read it. It's uh, Barijan Prabhu writes in his book, he says, Srila Prabhupada's words clearly indicate Sambandha, Abhidaya and Prayojana. 
Text 16 to 18 give knowledge of our relationship with Krishna, the Sambandha Gyan. Right? Is it okay? And uh, the 17th one, Mar uh, 19th one you said is Abhidha? 19th is the process, yes. And the 20, is, is the 20 is the Purushottam, the, uh, is the uh, Prayojana, the goal. So how come there are only three verses included in three, three, three shloki Gita? It should be in uh, 20. It's only Samband in those three verses. Yeah, 16 to 18 is the Sambandha, and the, and, but they're sometimes called the Tri Sloki Gita because they give knowledge, they give this knowledge. Okay. And, and Parijan Prabhu writes, Krishna also, as the knower of the Vedas and the compiler of Vedanta, in these three verses, 16 to 18, assist souls in transcending material existence by summarizing the essence of the Vedas, which is the Vedanta. Have you got it? These three verses, 16 to 18, they summarize the essence of the Vedas. And the essence of the Vedas is Vedanta. Vedanta is the Vedas in the condensed form. And so these three verses are the condensed form of Vedanta. They're telling us the main part of the Vedanta, the three verses, 16 to 18. That's why they're called the Tree Sloki Gita. Okay, Maharaj, thank you for that. And uh, Maharaj, uh, in the first verse, uh, Yastam Veda Veda, uh, it is mentioned that one who knows that Banan tree is actually the knower of the Vedas. So, uh, it, it rather seems to me uh, quite simple that there's uh, tree uprooted down and... Uh, um, and if you, if you can just give some elaboration on that thing, on what, on what that tree is and what are the twigs and all those things, if you can elaborate it. Yes, well, it, it, it's just an analogy that they're comparing the material world to the tree. Right? The, this material world, the point is we have to get detached from this material world because we're thinking this material world to be so important. But this analogy is given to help us to become detached to understand it's not real. The real thing is in the spiritual world. The, all of the relationships with, which we have here in this material world, they're all temporary. And they're all, there's so much illusion with them. But the reality is in the spiritual world. So this example of the tree is there. To understand, you remember Prabhupada gave the example, he said, just like if I hold you upside down, if I hold you by your feet, you know, you're not very, we're not very comfortable, how long we can tolerate. So the material world is like that, it's a reflection of the real tree. The real tree is in the spiritual world. So this banyan tree is given the example to indicate like a reflection. The root, the root is up, the branches are down. You have to read it a few times. If you read it over a few times and think about it, it will become easier to understand. It's a new concept. But Prabhupada's quotes, Prabhupada's uh, examples also are very helpful but being held upside down and remember we want to become attracted to the spiritual world we don't want to become absorbed in this world because this world is a temporary place of misery 
We want to become fascinated by the spiritual world. It's a spiritual world which is reality. There's no reality here in this world. But to get detached, that's the important thing. Therefore, if you're in that big banyan tree, there's many branches, it's very thick, very hard to see the light. You have to have an axe, you have to cut your way out. So the axe of detachment, that's the idea, to cut through the, these branches with the weapon of, not, the weapon of detachment. Right? So you, you, please, you please read it over again and read Prabhupada's quotes and I think you'll understand. We'll try to. Also the diagram which you showed uh, was quite helpful and I wanted to understand more of the diagram like the well, reflection in the desire and the fruits, dharma, scum, moksha, twigs and such and such. Yeah, well, you have that. You have the same. You have the same diagram in your student handbook. It's on page seventy-one. Okay. The the diagram is there, and everything is shown. All the different parts of the tree, and everything is explained there in detail on the diagram. It's very well done, actually. That we really spent a lot of time preparing. You can see the devotees. They, they didn't, they really put a lot of energy, a lot of effort to give everything. So make good use of your handbook. On page 71, you'll see the, the, this diagram, the tree, and all the different parts of the tree, and the, the significance of each of the parts. You know, the only way out of the tree is detachment, right? And you have to, you have to read it for yourself. And then, uh, find, find one in knowledge, mm, oh, it's so small, surrender to Krishna and attain, what is it? <laughs> Attains eternal abode, okay. Attain eternal abode. So, the, the different the leaves are the Vedic hymns. These are things which you just have to remember. I don't have a lot of ability. Prabhupada talks about them a little bit in the purport. He says, for example, the leaves. You know, the leaves of the tree. They look very colorful, but they're not going to last very long. They'll soon they fall off every year. So Vedic hymns, they give temporary benefit. The twigs are the sense objects, the tips of the branches are the senses. Uh, I have difficulty to explain these things. I, you just have to real. I, I, I don't really, it's a little tricky. <laughs> the sense objects are the twigs. Well, sense objects, we know what sense objects are. We know what the senses are, the tips of the branches. Tips of the branches are what we use to get knowledge, right? We get knowledge through the... So the senses are the tips of the branches. The tips of the branches, they can perceive different things. Then the roots are mentioned, the reflection on desire, the fruit, the fruit of the tree. What are the fruits of the tree? Dharma, Arta, Kama and Moksha. All right. It's the fruits of material activity. People want to enjoy these things in the material world. And then the living entity's involvement. How is the tree nourished? The diagram also mentions the nourishment of the tree by the three modes of nature. Goodness, passion and ignorance. The living entities' involvement. There are different living entities and on the higher branches of the tree. There's higher living entities like demigods and so on. And the lower branches of the tree, you've got animals and the lower creatures. 
according to their karma, they're situated in different places on that tree. Hopping from one branch to another, trying to taste the fruit, up is down and down is up. Can't, can't see how far the tree extends or where it ends. This is the nature of this tree. You can't see. It's so big. Although living entities are eternal fragmental parts of Krishna, they're struggling with the senses. And so, this is something, you know, you, you, you just have to read it again and again. You have, and gradually become familiar with it and you can accept this. Krishna himself has given this example of the banyan tree. So we, we should be familiar with it. We should know the different parts of the tree. And in this way, by knowing the parts of the tree, we can cultivate detachment from the material world. Right? Any other question? Nobody else? All right. So thank you very much. We'll meet tomorrow. Thank you. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Gaur Bhakti Vrinda Ki Jai. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna.